None of you would choose the bear. None of you. Not one of you would choose the bear. Imagine yourself, a man, walking through the woods. You come upon a bear. Well, oh my, it's a bear. But the bear's supposed to be there. The bear's supposed to be in the woods. If you quietly turn away and walk away from the bear, chances are the bear's going to mind its business. Now, imagine a different scenario. You, a man, walking through the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. And out of the corner of your eye, you spot him. Shia LaBeouf. You try to escape quietly, making your way through the woods, but you step on a twig. You turn around and notice he's following you about 30 feet back. He gets down on all fours and breaks into a sprint. He's gaining on you. What is he doing there? He's not meant to be there. But you take a closer look and you notice there's blood on his face. My god, there's blood everywhere. So would you choose the bear? Or would you choose the man? Shia LaBeouf. Okay, I like your outfit. I have a boyfriend. Girl, <clears throat> I love your outfit. Oh! Yeah, okay. yeah girl, now you good, girl. <laughs> no, because I get it. I would choose the bear over the man any day. Yesterday was a great day. My Chipotle bowl was full. The sun is out. Let me give out some compliments. I was telling the girls gays and days. They look amazing. Giving them their flowers. I'm walking home at night and this girl had a bomb outfit on. I'm talking dressed to the nines. Wherever she was coming from, she tore that down. I was filming myself walking home, but I had to stop and say, girl, you look good. When I tell you, the look on her face gagged me. Purse clutched. Eyes wide. Old girl was genuinely scared, which honestly kind of saddens me. I could tell she was scrambling for her words, but the first thing that came out was like, oh, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. I think about me, I'm gonna make sure the girls feel comfortable. I had to uh, uh, clear my voice and I said, oh, baby, you look so good. And the gayest voice I could. Right when I did that, my girl unclutched her purse, eyes relaxed. I could tell she was so relieved. He talked for a little bit afterwards. I said, girl, what you choose? And right when I said that, she said, the bear. <laughs> The reality is I would choose the bear, you would choose the bear, we would all choose the bear. Collectively, as the internet is female presenting people, we all would choose the bear. And I can't speak for everyone's reasons why they would choose the bear, but the reason I told my husband is this. Because a bear doesn't hate people the same way men hate women. And if I'm going to die anyway, I would choose the dignity and death of being mauled by a bear than a scary, scary man who wants to take his time. Because the scariest of bears will never be scarier than the scariest of men. And if I'm going to die anyway, I will take the dignity and death of a natural death from a wild animal than I would take the creative torture that a man can provide. Just remember, a dude actually married this feminist who hates men. I'm willing to bet he's on borrowed time and she'll divorce Robin when she wants to have another HOE phase. Or she's currently cheating on him behind his back with the very toxic men she claims to hate. <laughs> If you can't read the text, she wrote, the bear wouldn't tell me I took it like a champ afterwards. I guess she's implying that's what someone told her after he violated her. And there are similar comments in the comment section. The bear wouldn't tell me to just let it happen. The bear wouldn't say you can take it every time I begged it to stop. The bear wouldn't blame me. Who is going to tell these morons? The bear would eat them alive or attack and say nothing. They have a fighting chance against a man in a similar situation. Against a bear? Zero chance. You need more than one bullet to delete a bear. And this is what today's video is about. The bear versus man delusion trend that has gotten so big that even mainstream media is covering it. Like I said, MGTOW has been around for 10 years, yet it barely hits the news. And when it does, it gets slandered because some feminist or single mom raised incel goes postal. While it doesn't even take a month for the news to hype up the bear versus man trend. And we're going to be looking at one of the pieces the news did on this trend. The title of today's article is, Why Women Would Prefer to Be Alone in the Woods with a Bear Than a Man. And the author is Dr. Lisa Segura, who's an associate professor in cybercrime and gender. Another made-up subject or field for feminists to make them feel important and smart. This female literally got a PhD in something most feminist thoughts can blog about on a random website. This so-called strong and independent didn't major in a real hard field like chemistry. That's way too hard. Too much work. That field actually has standards. Instead, she chose to major in gender studies so she can justify pretending to be a victim. 
which means I'm pretty sure she's going to be extremely biased against men in this debate. Enough about this post wall, let's get balls deep into it. Would you rather find yourself alone in the woods with a bear or a man? This is the question currently dividing social media. Based on the responses online, it looks like most women answering the question say they would choose the bear, a decision that is shocking many men. It's not shocking, honestly, that these feminists and modern women are this delusional and dumb. They honestly don't know how the real world works because us men built them a safe society to live in. These bird brains don't even know that polar bears are the most dangerous bears in the world because they actively hunt humans. As in, you're dead 99% of the time if you have an encounter with one, if you don't have a loaded gun. Granted, the average person will never run into a polar bear unless if they live in the northern part of North America. Maybe we're splitting hairs or debating semantics. Why don't I go in with the brown bears? But I do go in with the black bears. So I've worked with Pooh and Honey almost their whole lives. And we've built a little bond. But Scooby and Shaggy came to us at six years old. So there's just not as much trust. And even if these guys were just trying to play, they could easily squish me. See, those brown bears, despite being raised in a zoo and are used to being around humans, are still too dangerous for this professional animal handler. That's even after he's built a positive report with them because he feeds them all the time by hand through a fence, and still he doesn't want to take the risk to be in their enclosure. Continuing with the article, the reaction shows some men don't understand women's experiences. The assertion that women would prefer to encounter a bear is based on evidence about the rate of male violence against women, and on a lifetime of learning to fear and anticipate this violence. This is especially true of SEX violence, something which would not be associated with encountering a bear. Most men understand there are dangerous men out there, but these feminists are using this trend to bash all men and continue to make modern women hostile towards us. Hi, I have every right to hate men. Let's talk about that. The justification that you're giving for your hatred of men shows a severe lack of maturity on your part. You're using your anecdotal experiences with men to make judgment calls on half the population of Earth. Making sweeping generalizations about an entire gender is just fucking stupid. Now, I've had bad experiences with black men because my dad was a black man and he was horrible and my mom has had boyfriends who have been black and have treated me like shit. I don't hate all black men because I can realize that those people who hurt me were individuals and not a collective group. You need to work through whatever trauma you've gone through because you are projecting your experience onto an entire gender. And mindsets like the one that you have lead to things like racism, sexism, and a bunch of other bigotry. Continuing... According to the World Health Organization, one in three women, around 736 million globally, will have experienced SEX or physical violence by an intimate partner or SEX violence from a non-partner in their lifetime. This figure has largely remained unchanged over the past decade. Let's do the math. If there's 8 billion people on Earth and half of them are women, then it's 700,000 out of 4 billion women. That's a little less than 1 out of 4 at best, not 1 out of 3. Already she's exaggerating the facts, and most of those violations happen in developing countries or places where there's no law and order. Usually it's one and the same. Well, if you were born in Pakistan, or originally from Pakistan, you must have been kidnapped by me. You've been kidnapped by you? Of course. Of course there is no option to get you, right? Okay. You have your, your women over there, though. Seriously. So you are in Canada, so I cannot say you anything. Okay. I yeah. cannot touch you anything. Oh, it is Canada. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely you couldn't touch me. There's you, laws to you, this shit here. You, you, you know what I mean? That's not that flattering. That's kind of scary. Trust me, because, like, there, is, there was no option. Okay. Well, you have a good night. You too. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye, Shabba Boom Boom. Back to the article. Being attacked by a bear is much less common, with only 664 attacks worldwide over 15 years, and very few fatal attacks. And bears tend to avoid humans, attacking only when provoked or protecting their young. Getting close to a bear and her cubs almost guaranteed to get attacked or at least chased.
This female was lucky she was able to spot the bear first at a safe distance where she can run away. Also, women are around men thousands and thousands of times more than wild bears. Because being around a bear is playing Russian roulette. It's a wild animal for a reason. It's the apex predator of an ecosystem. Nothing can kill it except for larger bears and humans with guns. That's about it. This man versus bear thing is so fucking stupid. None of you would choose the bear. None of you. Not one of you would choose the bear. You can sit in your kitchen and opine about what you would choose, but in, in a real scenario, you all every single one of you would immediately choose the man. If it's a dice roll, right? Isn't that the scenario that you, you don't know what kind of man? You just have to roll those dice, right? What percentage of bears do you think eat humans? Probably 100%, right? What percentage of men do these horrific things that you guys are just like addicted to true crime or something and you've you've decided that we all just walk around looking for someone to 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 traumatize this is so frustrating yeah the comments are going to be like well he's triggered look at this guy he's so mad well the question itself is so i don't know on one hand it's obvious on the other with social media it's like ooh, i get to carefully explain why i'm a bear it's less dangerous than, than a human male. What are we doing, guys? A bear will eat you. It will eat you immediately, guys, starting with your legs. You'll be alive most of the time you're being eaten by the bear, right? Or you can roll the dice and nine times out of 10, get a normal dude who's like, shit, we're in the woods. How do we do this? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll start building the house. You forage for something. You would choose that. Stop. You're being so fucking annoying. Continuing. This is not about generalizing or fearing all men. Women know that not all men are dangerous, but women don't know which men they should fear. Only that male violence and male entitlement to women's bodies is something that they have to be on guard for. That's the dangers of living that city girl or SEX in the city lifestyle and the break up the nuclear family. You see, if these bedwenches actually kept their legs closed and got married as a virgin 18 year old, they'd have a man to protect them. Before that, they'd have a father and brothers to protect them because they live with their family until a real man took their hand in marriage. When I see my wife cry, when I see her hurt, it crushes me. Like, and if you don't have that kind of love and appreciation for the mother of your men out there, if you don't have that kind of love and passion for your wife that when you see her hurt, it breaks you inside to the point of you being enraged, sad, pissed off, frustrated, mad to the point where you want to destroy whatever did that to her, you are not doing it right. These feminists talk and stay at home wives are doing three jobs. What about the husbands who protect them 24 seven? You know how much private security costs? There's a reason why only rich people can afford a personal bodyguard. Back into the article. Women are commonly victims of SEX crimes, and when men are overwhelmingly the perpetrators, including against other men, there are enough men who have hurt or are capable of hurting women, and women have no way of knowing which ones these are. While much violence against women comes from men they know, the risk of danger from men they don't know is something that informs their day-to-day -day lives. That's because these same feminists also vote for cashless bail, which lets criminals out the same day they commit a crime so they can get smashed out by criminal chads and tyrones. Modern women are so numb from getting banged out that they become attracted to the most toxic and wild males. There are multiple stories from the news of these females choosing thug dick over good men and being deleted by that very thug. Put the crab leg down. Back to the video. For example, research shows that women change their behavior, making certain decisions about the routes they take or what they wear, to avoid harassment or abuse from men in public. Scholars such as Fiona Vera Gray refer to this as safety work. There's a reason why camping grounds say don't leave food out, or wash your hands after you've eaten because it will attract the bears. These females dress like streetwalkers to get male attention and are shocked they get unwanted attention. And this author just proves why the city girl lifestyle is so dangerous. She's making a great argument for the trad wives. You know, bears are masters at disguising how dangerous they really are. They're a fuzzy furball with the strength of five men. 
They've got cute little paws with pretty big claws. Plus, they've got a boopable snoot full of sharp teeth and a bite force of 800 pounds. Back to the article, women's view of men is also colored by their non-violent actions that harm women. Clearly, bears also do not contribute to or uphold systemic sexism and misogyny, but most men do. Uphold the patriarchy as in get drafted to fight wars? I can't imagine what it would be like to be a frontline woman who fell into enemy hands. I mean, that's a level of absolute bloody catastrophic hell that I think that that we should be very, very cautious about exposing anyone to. And so I have a proclivity to think that women are differentially susceptible to exploitation on the captured enemy front. And I don't know exactly, you know, given credence to what you say about making sure we have the most qualified people, you know, maybe you can ask people to face their death. I don't know if you're, if it's okay to ask them to face endless gang and then death. You know, that's, that's pushing the envelope. Or what about to get canceled automatically and fired if a female claims she's uncomfortable? There are billionaires who had to sell their sports franchises because of female accusations. Is that what she's talking about? The Snyders have faced a lot of pressure to sell the team amid investigations into the misconduct in the front office. This has been an ongoing cycle of investigations and then Snyder and spokespeople issue out comments, rebuttals, statements after more and more investigations and allegations against ownership. D.C.'s attorney general is suing the Washington commanders, Dan Snyder, the NFL and NFL commissioner Roger Goodell. The AG accused them of lying to the public and covering up allegations of misconduct. So Attorney General Carl Racine has been prolific over the past five or six years in his use and enforcement of the District's Consumer Protection Act, and he's using it here again. No one, not Mr. Snyder, not Mr. Goodell, no entity, not the commanders, not even the National Football League, is above the law. Of course, for Commanders fans, it's going to be interesting to see how this all unfolds. But really, just on a national scope, it's interesting to see how a team and a person and an organization that has so many investigations pending from Congress, from D.C., from Maryland, Virginia, and others, how this will all shake out if Snyder eventually sells. Will he be able to take his yacht and ride off into the Mediterranean sunset? Or will he stick around the D.C. area? It's unclear, but Commanders fans, would be incredibly happy for a new day of this organization with new ownership. Also, male bears, like most wild animals, kill cubs that aren't theirs so they can mate with the mama bear and pass their own genes on. Yet, we have male simps. Some are extremely successful that will be stepdads and raise other men's seed willingly, thus pass on the other man's genes and not theirs. You should be grateful you're not a lion. You probably know that lions live in groups called prides. As the cubs grow up, the females stay in the pride while the males leave. They form what's called a coalition of nomadic males until they find a new pride. But they can't just create a pride out of thin air. They have to steal one, and this is where things get dark. When they find one, they have to fight the pride's alpha male. If the alpha male wins, the coalition goes off, probably injured, in search of a new pride. But if the coalition wins, the alpha male is killed along with all of his cubs in a process called infanticide. And this isn't uncommon in the animal kingdom. It's a way of ensuring your genes get passed on at a successful rate. And in the case of the lions, the new alpha male wants to make sure that all the cubs in the pride are his. But they're all very aware of this process. Female lions have been documented taking her cubs and escaping the pride, leaving the safety of this community in order to make sure her cubs don't die. Continuing. My research on misogynistic online groups has explored how men engage in acts against women that reinforce gender inequality. She's one of these hags that spy and keep tabs on red pill and MGTOW groups and personalities. I wouldn't be surprised if she worked for the government and is helping gynocentric dictatorship make lists. Continuing. Writer Emma Pittman has described this phenomenon using the analogy of a human pyramid. The choices of some men to stay silent about abuse is the base of the pyramid, holding up other men who engage in misogynistic jokes or commit violence. The overall effect, whether deliberate or via ignorance or indifference, is to normalize and support the actions of male sex predators and domestic violators. This is all BS. There is no such thing as a violator culture. Those males in prison who have crimes against women have to be separated from the general population or they'll be attacked and even killed for just existing. This is prison, full of criminals who celebrate certain crimes, even have standards that say the contrary to what these modern women claim. 
What happens to molesters and predators in prison? Now, I'm going to warn you, this one is really graphic. It doesn't matter your color, your creed, your race, your religion, your gang, what you believe in, what you don't believe in. If you're an inmate or convict wearing blue or your CO wearing brown, if you hurt an innocent one in those type of ways, you will get dealt with. I hear a lot of people say, oh, why don't they just end them taxpayer money? No, no, no. Your taxpayer money is going towards the torture of these piece of shits that went after our little angels and tried to hurt them and did hurt them. So every single day, they have grown men that have come together, at least the real ones that are down to protect their children and down to protect their women, coming for them every day. Every single day of their life, they're worried about getting ended. They're worried about starving. They're worried about getting extorted. And not just by the convicts, by the guards. It's all in. You hurt a child or a woman, you're done. Us. Continuing. This culture props up the men who are silent bystanders, observing sexism, harassment, or abuse, but doing nothing. The men who make or laugh along with the sexist or grape jokes. Those who are violator apologists and blame women for their sexual victimization. Skipping some. This continuum of misogyny is women's everyday reality, and at no point do bears feature. No one's defending these males who are statistically sons of deadbeat single moms and feminists, who force themselves on women. What most men do on the internet is holding women accountable. Ironically, these same feminists who are usually hardcore environmentalists and are the first ones who defend sharks when they attack people and ironically talk about what to do to prevent these attacks. Sharks get a really bad rap, and the thing is they're not really an aggressive species that are going to go out of their way to try and attack you if you're in their water. Um, they're not really territorial. These are pelagic species, so they don't really have a territory. They just kind of roam. Um, but yeah, we also aren't food for sharks. Sharks don't want to eat people, so they really don't have a reason to attack a human unless it is provoked or it is accidental, which means we look like their their food source. However, these sharks I was swimming with, I don't look like their food source. I am way too big for these sharks. Um, the only shark out here that would maybe mistake me for a food source is a tiger shark, but even then, there are so many ways to be safe in the water with sharks. It's so many ways to prevent any kind of um, bad interaction. Um, but yeah, sharks are awesome. Sharks are amazing animals. Um, you, It's really easy to be afraid of them, but it's also really easy to start to overcome those fears. I know I did. Um, and they're essential animals for our ecosystem. And so I'd really suggest trying to like overcome and better understand sharks. And most of the time, when feminists finally get accountability or not getting the simp treatment, they'll claim they're being mistreated in the worst way by men. Like if they say something dumb on the internet and get ratioed or trolled for it, they'll cry all the isms. That's why men have difficulty with women who are completely out of control. But what I mean, is an out-of-control out woman? What is this creature? show? How do we know when we met one? Well, I'm sure that you've met women in your life that, that, that acted towards you in a bullying and detestable manner. It's very difficult for women to cope with that because they don't have any real recourse. And female bullying can be unbelievably vicious. And usually that takes the place of takes the shape of reputation destruction, innuendo, and gossip. So, because people look at aggressive and antisocial behavior in women and in men, and in women it tends to take the expression of innuendo, gossip, and reputation destruction, and in men it take, tends to take the form of outright physical aggression. And there's a whole literature on that. It's, this has been known for, for, for 30 years. Look, women have to express aggression somehow unless you're willing to say that they're not aggressive. They tend not to do it physically, not to the degree men do, so they use other channels. And what other channels are there other than physical aggression if you're going to be aggressive? Well, you go after people verbally. You go after them with innuendo and gossip and reputation destruction. Notice this feminist reporter was so uncomfortable, the shifting in the seat, looking down, this body language of someone in distress because of what's being said. That's because Jordan Peterson was describing her. Back to the article. Men are generally surprised, defensive even, when the subject of male violence against women is, is discussed. This is often where people invoke the response, not all men. Statistically, men are more likely to be the victim of all the crimes because there's no one standing up for men. And these crimes get swept under the rug or barely make the news, while crimes against women are at least making the local news, if not national news, to future the feminist agenda. Also, lesbians are statistically more likely to viol violate other women than men, which is one reason why they have the highest divorce rate. So when it comes to lesbian relationships in general, do y'all feel like damn near abuse has kind of not, and when I say abuse, it doesn't have to mean a person is putting hands on you every day. If they did it once, twice, that's an abuse relationship, period, to me. 
to me. It doesn't have to be every day. But do y'all feel like lesbian relationships kind of like normalize? Like, oh, we two, like you were saying earlier, like we two Very females, so. like, I, if you a girl, I'm a girl too. I'm going to hit you back if you hit me. Like, has it become normal because we two females? I do feel like it is a little more lenient, of course. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, yeah, you a girl, I'm a girl, but you not about to Let's be just make it seem like that shit so normal. I'm like, that's not... First of all, I'm going to make this comment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it bothered me. At the end of the day, I never tried to play victim. I never tried to play victim. I just wanted to make it be known. Like, I've I'm, I'm always been real. I've mm-hmm. always been uncut. And I've always been raw. Mm-hmm. And at that time, we were broken up, so I told my story. And I was laughed at. I was. It was like, oh, how you let that? How you let her beat you up? But you out here trying to beat up so and so. Me hitting on someone I love and hitting on a stranger is two different things. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know you, boo boo. Like I love you. <laughs> Calm down. Right. Baby. Not too much. Yeah. Like. <clears throat> so when it happened to okay, let's talk about it. When it happened to Krishan and Blueface. It was, whoa, oh my goodness, I feel for her. Oh, poor you. Kind of, but sometimes people no, like, let's, they No, toxic. let's really talk about it. Like, she got sympathy. Like, people yeah. cared for her. People were worried about her. Ain't nobody was worried about me. Yeah. Ain't nobody yeah. cared about me. Ain't nobody, like... I feel what you're saying. Like, nobody cared. They didn't get care. it. It was, it was laughed at. So, no, I think it's very normalized. You can get... Yeah. I, I can scroll on TikTok right now. We'll find a... You want to talk shit? You want to run your mouth? Right. Bitch, we both girls. Point of view, we both girls. Whole lot of gay shit. Whole lot of gay, 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 gay. gay. Like- Back to the video. When women took to social media to express their anger and devastation following the deletion of Sarah Everard by a police officer in 2021, hashtag not all men trended online. Meanwhile, police advised women not to walk alone at night, placing the burden of avoiding violence on women. Point taken. Men get deleted by cops all the time, and there's no national news coverage or outrage. I can't even show the clips here because this video will get deleted by YouTube. Yes, police need to face accountability, but I urge feminists to go live in cities where there are very little or no police and see what happens to their safety. This whole defund the police has lowered the bar and allowed anyone to be a cop, who will shoot in a moment's notice because they weren't qualified to handle the stress of the job and didn't get the proper training because the budget got cut. Back to the article. This conversation is about privilege and not recognizing it. Many men are able to walk through their daily lives not being worried that they're going to be attacked or violated, can walk alone late at night without taking any safety precautions, or even not having such thoughts cross their minds, and do not feel their hearts beat faster if they hear footsteps behind them. It may not be all men, but it is all women who live smaller lives because of the threat of some men's violence. That's wrong. Men who live in big cities have to worry about their safety too. The difference is they're not effing dumb. They're not walking on the same sidewalk in a dark street when there's a group of men walking towards them. They're not counting their cash in public like females dressing like streetwalkers, thus baiting the criminals in. Also, most men aren't going out to clubs or bars at night because of the MGTOW reality. While these same modern women who are promoting the idea they're safer around bears are still trying to live their city girl lifestyle, they'd rather risk living in dangerous New York to pursue a meaningless career than work and live in a safer town because it's not quote-unquote exciting or because they don't like the vibe or because it's boring. These discussions are an opportunity for men to understand women's genuine fears and to be part of the solution rather than the problem. Would you rather leave your daughter in the forest with a man or a bear? Are you fucking insane? And I know why y'all dumbasses are saying that shit. I would rather be graped again than have my skull crushed by a bear and then have to fucking climb down a mountain for hours and then still wait hours to be found and possibly not be found and just die. Sincerely from someone who's experienced it from a man and a woman, even though I mostly only talk about the woman time on here, Y'all are fucking losing the plot. Y'all are getting really fucking ridiculous out here. There's a 0% chance that the bear is going to help my daughter get out of the forest, give her water, give her food, and protect her. As I said the other day, y'all are losing the fucking plot on this. If y'all want to keep on comparing men to bears and saying that men are more dangerous than bears, then we can go on ahead and say that women are more dangerous than crocodiles because they actually fucking are. Would you rather your daughter be left with a crocodile? Matter of fact, would you rather your son be left with a crocodile or a woman? Like, do you hear how ridiculous y'all are? 
Sure. And I already know what y'all are going to say to try to shut that down. Y'all are going to be like, oh my gosh, but men actually hurt more people per year than bears do. Okay. Well, women actually abuse more children per year than crocodiles do. Um, hello, women actually unalive more children per year than crocodiles do. So what do you want to say? Like what? Y'all really just want any fucking excuse to keep dehumanizing men. Can you imagine what this psychologically does to little boys to see y'all constantly saying shit like this and constantly comparing them to animals? Do you know what psychologically that would do? Y'all need to go to fucking therapy because right now you're continuing the cycle and you're going to create more of the men that you fucking complain about. Mark my words. We've been saying the solution bedwenches, but you feminists refuse to listen. Stay-at-home girlfriend and wives lifestyles are the answer to avoid these dangerous men. And this is why men have gone MGTOW, because it's no use in trying to turn these 304s, feminists, or bedwenches into housewives. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.